Alright, so today we are looking actually at a beautiful uh, game. Fireworks will start almost from the first move. Played on the second day, sixth round of the US Women Open. And uh, yes, again, we have a game of Dorsa. She's playing the uh, white pieces against uh, Jennifer Chu. So let's get this uh, started. We kick off with e4, e5, knight f3, knight f6, c3, bishop b4, a3, the exchange, and after castle, bishop g5. Now, h6, kicking the bishop, bishop to h4, and g5. And now, here we have it, knight takes g5. This is actually a position that uh, I have played myself quite a bit uh, from the white pieces. This exact position and also variant of this. Um, the idea of the knight sacrifice is quite straightforward. After the recapture of the second pawn, we have a, a pinned knight, uh, which is annoying. We have an uh, open black king, and we also have two pawns of compensation. Those pawns can shuttle up the board. So we have multiple things for white to play for here. We can try to recapture the black knight. We can use our pawns to advance them, and we can attack the king. So we really have quite some compensation for the piece. Um, it's also very key that there is not a dark squared bishop. Additionally, there is not much development, and uh, the h1 rook can join in attacks. So the all of these are vectors that yeah, we, we might want to play this. As mentioned, I played this myself a lot, but honestly, mostly online. So in a national championship, <laughs> I wouldn't know it would dare to do something like this. Uh, now, black played uh, king to g7. Now, the idea is clear, of course. It is uh, defending the, the knight on f6, and it moves the rook to h8. But I, I really don't like this move. And uh, the key reason is you, you really want to uh, to stop white from achieving any of its goals. And for that, you want to have your pieces in the game that are doing nothing right now. So better would have been the move d6, opening the diagonal for your uh, black bishop, which then instantly becomes active, and also vacating the d7 square for a knight to add a defense right there. Uh, potentially, you might even want to move your rook to e8 and lift it at a certain moment to act as a defender which is much more difficult on the h-file. So h4 now, yeah, f makes total sense. Adding to the, to the attack, pushing the pawn that you have. And now d6. Oh, uh, also what I didn't say, the, the, the king is just not a good defender. It, it, it's not, not pleasant as all as a defender. Now h5, and yeah, h6 might become a, a threat uh, later on bishop to e6, and now it's actually a very principal move. Uh, the commentators, uh, including uh, Yasser, were very uh, impressed by the, by the move f4. Uh, although I very much agree it's a good move, I was not so much surprised to see it on the board. It, it makes total sense. As uh, white, you want to, uh, well, either open the f-file because then you can put something on the f-file to attack the, the knight again. Um, and you will also be happy to have the potential to open it yourself, to push the pawn at a later moment. That the bishop is on e6 is only helping you to make that decision quicker. So let's have a look at the potential that black has, right? Because do we need to open the file? We perhaps don't want to. So what would happen if we play something like knight c6? Well, Knight c6 is not doing really anything else than releasing the knight from, uh, from its table. Um, we can move now, well we have options, but we can for example move uh, h6 check. Um, with the same idea, we can first move f5 and after bishop retreats then have the threat of h h6. Or perhaps the best move would be to leave the tension and just play bishop to d3. The idea is that although the knight seems twice defended, you cannot play queen to e8 now uh, to uh, re release the knight from the pin because you get h6 check. And after the king moves, yeah, oops, there goes the knight. Not pleasant at all. So 
that might be a good way of, uh, of continuing. Uh, so let's not move to knight to c c6, shall we? Uh, an, a square where the knight wants to be is d7. But if knight b to d7, then oops. So that's not an option. So what else do we have? Well, bishop c8. Uh, but if bishop c8, then h6, k h7, takes. And let's say, well, let's first try takes. Uh, now we simply win a piece. And we can do it in two ways. We can do it by the most simple way, queen takes, rook takes, and bishop takes. Um, ah, and now clearly we're winning. But I prefer, personally, queen to uh, f3. And after queen to f3, the honest answer is that technically you still get something similar because after bishop to g4, queen takes, queen takes, knight takes, it's kind of the same idea. But you just give a black more chances to screw up because if he would again do something like knight b to d7, a move that you in general want to play when you have uh, like the, <laughs> the knight into the situation, you just screw up more now because you get queen f5 check, king h8 and boom! castle and we also pin the knight on d7 absolutely horrible so that is not something to look forward to that's why i would prefer the move queen to f3 just to give uh black some more chances to do the wrong thing now uh honestly said this is of course not necessarily needed you can also as uh, as black after you play bishop c8 uh check king h7 f takes you can play the move that is bishop g4 but after bishop e2, you don't improve anything after the captures because we now still have queen f3 with the same line that I showed you before. So those are all options of not taking the pawn. So yeah, let's take the pawn then. After e takes f4, uh, rook to h4, knight b to d7. There we have that move, that move that absolutely wants to come. Rook takes d4, uh, sorry, f4 to again increase pressure and now um, yeah just note that if queen e8 then we have queen to d4 so you can again not step out because this is triple attack you have now uh, the pin through the diagonal starting on d4 and really the only thing you can do is move your queen to e7 and put it back into the in the pin again which is very very much not pleasant uh, something like knight e5, oops, fails instantly because we have two attackers then. So that's not an option. Black plays rook to h8. g4, very nice. And queen to e7. Now queen to d4, same idea as I showed you in, an, uh, in the line, in the variation. Uh, we have now a double pin, we have a permanent pin. Um, on the king and we have a king on the queen so it's, it's not not nice at all c5 queen to f2 and and now i actually want to show you i don't do this often but i want to show you an engine line so the engine here found rook a to e8 and i'll explain this and i'll also explain why i choose an en engine line this in this situation um, the idea behind this is that white cannot play uh, castles. You want to castle long to get out of the, the battery of the rook and queen, right? Um, but in that, in this case, black has to shot knight takes e4, at attacking your queen and also attacking the the bishop on uh, on g5. So after rook takes, it is queen takes g5, and black seems to uh, be surviving. Um, now, if you don't castle and play something like queen to h4, then you have the shot. Bishop takes g4, absolutely beautiful. Rook takes g4, queen takes e4, and after takes takes, we get the queen back. Right, knight takes e4, and that is why rook a to uh, to e8 would be a very nice move. Now, as mentioned, this is an engine move. Normally, I don't show engine moves, but the reason uh, why I chose to to add it, it, it does uh, follow a very basic chess principle, which is uh, putting putting up a battery against the enemy king, especially when the king cannot just step out of it. So it, it is nice to see that there are these kind of possibilities to uh, to escape, although I would not find this myself in a classical game even, I think. 
So Black did not find it. Black played uh, rook h to g8, a more human move. And uh, now the next move of the bishop to h3. Here I thought that uh, bishop to e2 also makes kind of sense. Uh, again, you block the e file, but perhaps white didn't really want that because they're not thinking defense, it's thinking attack only. But also it is uh, defending g4 and h5. Just looks a bit more uh, pleasant to me than a chosen bishop h3, which is also a good move, by the way. Uh, king f8. Yeah, now uh, white cashes in. Uh, bishop takes, knight takes, takes, and now takes on g4, takes, rook takes, and castles. This will allow black to take now also on h5, but after rook takes, uh, rook f takes on uh, d6 and queen takes, um, we have a very nice position for white with a very vulnerable black king. The key here is that uh, we have a uh, major piece, uh, well, mid-game, we'll call this ending yet, um, and there the vulnerability of the king is very, very important. Also note that in this exact position, black is actually threatening to trade queens with queen to f4. It is clear that if we trade down everything, black stands a very nice chances with the pawn on f7, but we are very, very far away from that. So white here wants to stop queen to f4 check, clearly, uh, and also a potential rook to f4 would not be nice, and chooses to do so by rook to f6. Now personally, I prefer rook to f1, and only because of the very simple reason. It achieves, achieves the same thing as rook f6, but it threatens, it threatens checkmate, so that is just more forcing. So if you can choose between two moves and one threatens checkmate and they s uh, accomplish the same thing, then usually it's better to give your opponent less options. Uh, so not rook f1, but rook to f6 was played here. Still good move. Queen e7. Uh, rook to f1. And now we have the, uh, yeah, the, the in most uh, many cases, the strongest possible battery in chess, assuming we haven't promoted anything. Uh, rook, queen, rook is the strongest battery. Uh, in some situations, people prefer the alakine gun, of course, where you have rook, rook, queen, queen at the, at, uh, at the base of the, of the battery. But this is a very, very strong setup indeed. Rook to g7 to defend. And now king b1, uh, very, very crucial, uh, this idea. Um, as mentioned before, you want to have your king in a major piece ending to be as safe as possible, and your opponent's king to be as vulnerable as, uh, as possible. King to b1 steps out of uh, the diagonal from c1 to h6. Uh, it has the option of going to a2 for any back rank uh, checks, mates, and uh, well, potential mate, for example, would be in some situations a queen on e1 if it will not be defended. And stepping out of it is always a good idea. It also uh, takes away many counter checks that will lead to a queen trade, which might be the direct reason why white has chosen to move this piece. Okay, if we continue. Um, here a good idea would have been, I think, rook uh, g to h7, with the idea of planting a rook on h1 to see if you can get away some of the tension on your, uh, on your position. Um, black, however, moved rook to e5, and the threat on e1 is not that strong. Um, rook to h6, yeah, makes sense. White says, oh, you don't want the uh, a-file, I am more than happy to take the a-file, and this is now very, very threatening. King to e8, trying to run. Now note that you should not check now instantly, because if you check, then you get king to d7, check, and king escapes to c7. While this is still not a pleasant position for black, uh, you kind of let the king walk away. And in the middle, it's just very vulnerable because you can put your major pieces around the king and it's just devastating. So in this situation, we want to prevent that. And both uh, rook to d1 would prevent it, but uh, white chooses queen to, to d2, which also works fine. Um, rook g8 would be I guess an okay uh, try, rook h7, queen c7 might be a good line. Um, queen d7, yeah, instantly when I saw this move, my spider senses went off and I was uh, thinking uh, along the lines of 
uh, rook to h8 check would lead to like king e7 and then queen to h6 and now you just threaten a lot you threaten uh, to go to f6 you clearly threaten the on three rook and g7 and if black would try to stop that we go to the opening that he's created that's queen f8 ch uh, check just to show you one line and then king to e6 check it's just game over because after take check we win the rook and the black rook is gone so that would not be an option um white i honestly thought for a second really just one second but white didn't see it because it was not played but i don't think that's the case J white just saw a different way of winning and it's rook to d6 also beautiful move actually it looks much more pleasing uh visually than uh, than my attempt um yeah queen to e7 and now rook to d1 and then we set up the same battery but now on a d file and what do you want to do i mean black threatens mate on d8 uh sorry white threatens mate on d8 it is black who's being threatened and yeah it's not much uh queen to c7 which was played does not help rook to d8 check king e7 was played and after rook to d7 check he forked the king and queen and it is over absolutely beautiful uh, game being played and i have to say the dorsa actually played multiple very nice games very attacking uh, in this tournament i think she's a very attacking player overall and if she continues like this he will for sure have one extra fan that will be myself uh okay thank you for uh for watching let me know in the comments uh what kind of games you want to see in the future and uh yeah i'll see you later Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.